Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light and welcome to all of you in this Facebook group to this very special challenge. It's a very short five day challenge uh, where we're going to pack so much in. So I'm just uh, live at the moment, just gone live. It'll take a few moments for those of you to come and uh, join me live. If you're watching this on the replay, you may be thinking, why is he talking about stuff that's not just getting straight to the point? in the first few minutes. Well, it's to allow those people who are joining me live to join me live because Facebook needs to do the thing that it needs to do. So what are we going to cover in this five day challenge and why are we running one? Well, I've run quite a few challenges in the past and they've always been awesomely successful in helping you to succeed in every stage of the police recruitment process, no matter where you are in that process. One of the things I'm here for is to ensure that you succeed. This is what we do in the groups. This is what we do. We do everything that we can to ensure that you are successful in the police recruitment process. Uh, many of you will know me already, uh, but for those of you who don't, uh, here's my brief introduction to you. Uh, Brendan here, and I set up Blue Light about 10 years ago now, just under 10 years ago, um, just before I retired from the police service as a way of supporting people to succeed in the recruitment process. Um, and now it's developing into supporting people to succeed once they're actually in the police. But this bit's all about police recruitment. And since then, uh, probably a, a good conservative estimate is about 8,000 people have succeeded in the recruitment process as a result of that support. It's probably more than that. That's a really conservative estimate. Uh, 8,000, it's probably more like 10,000, but that just seems like boasting. So you're in good hands. You're in good hands. For the past 10 years, I've been supporting people to succeed, developed all sorts of techniques and strategies and tactics that will enable you to succeed. Um, and importantly as well, as track record that goes before that. Um, I've been working in the police sector now for 36 years. I joined the police in 1985 and uh, developed an interest in coaching and supporting people uh, in the 90s. Uh, actually before that, in the 1988, I did my tutor constables course, uh, but really started developing an interest when I got promoted to sergeant and started supporting my constables to succeed. Went on to become an inspector, uh, supporting my constables and sergeants and PCSOs to succeed. And succeed they did. And so all the models and strategies and tactics I developed from there, I've now developed further into... I'd say that there are things that you're not going to find elsewhere. So just during this challenge, you are going to find uh, techniques and tactics that you won't find elsewhere. All right, You're not going to find them elsewhere. You're only going to find them here uh, at Blue Light. So I don't go and scour the internet and look for, right, well, that works over there and that works over there. So I'll just take all of that and reinvent it as something new. No, the techniques that we utilize are techniques that I've developed I've developed and I'll tell you more about as the challenge goes on. So tonight we are just going to focus on mindset. This is so important folks. Unless we've got the mindset right, we are not going to succeed. Well, we might succeed, it might take you two or three times, or you might succeed at the online assessment centre but then fail at your final interview, or you might succeed at all of those things, you might succeed at all of those things. Um, and then only to fail at the final hurdle with something like your BMI or your fitness or qualifications. We're going to make sure that you're fully aware and cognizant of everything that you need to do to succeed in the process. So before we talk about that and the importance of mindset and what you need to do to get your mindset um, tuned in to the process, a few quick shout outs to those of you who are joining this evening. So we've got uh, Tamara's watching, uh, Lau's watching. Vicky's saying, how do I join this? Vicky, you, you, you're watching this. You must be watching this if you're actually commenting. Um, uh, Elizabeth is saying, also unsure how to join. It's, it's a Facebook Live, which means that you, you're watching this. Uh, Rose is saying, anyone know how we watch this live? Um, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Let me know, folks. Is, is there someone there who's actually managing to watch this? Um, it, it's a live broadcast inside the group, so it, your Facebook feed should be telling you there's a live broadcast. Um, 
and it should present to you as being live as well. It might have something to do with your browser, you might have to refresh it. Anyway, there will be a recording made of this and it will go into the group, so you'll be able to watch it anyway. Um, so someone let me know in the comments if it's actually coming across as live. Um, let's just see. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Lau's saying, Laura, Laura actually is saying, hope you're well, do you ever take a day off? No, <laughs> why would I take a day off? <laughs> I know it's Bank Holiday Monday, but it's pouring down with rain out there. So what else would you much rather be doing? Would you much rather be here or would you much rather be sat watching the television? All right, so um, Lau, uh, Laura's saying, yes, yeah, coming across as live. Awesome, F fantastic. And Jack's saying, couldn't see it, but I went to the watch icon and now I can see it. I need to put that in the instructions next time, don't I? Go to the watch icon and actually press the watch icon. Uh, so hopefully, Jack, someone's seen that comment and those people who can't see it because they've not gone to the watch icon will be able to watch it now. All right, awesome stuff. So what's this one thing that's going to make a difference? That's what I'm going to talk about today. The one thing that's consistently going to make a difference. This is something that it's a mindset I adopted back in the 90s, um, around 92, 93. I started trying to figure out how, how I'm going to create this incredible, fulfilling um, career for myself. Uh, I'd already been in the Cheshire Constabulary. Uh, back then, I was in the Bermuda Police. And I started reading around thinking, so how do we progress ourselves? How do we create perfection in our career? And this is where I discovered this one thing that makes a huge, huge difference, massive difference. And it's quite simply taking action. You know, there's nothing complicated about it. Uh, the, the simple thing is taking action, but there's more to it. It's, it's not just taking action randomly. Uh, it's taking action with a purpose. So that's what I'm gonna to talk to you tonight about because this is a consistent thing in my career. And for those people who have been awesome, those people who've been um, incredible in the police recruitment process, and they've succeeded everything first time, not just succeeded, but just completely blown things out of the water, then this is what they've done. This is what they've done. Um, so Jack's doing really well here. He's saying, it's on your task bar, it should be a little TV at the bottom, then click live. Uh, so I should put that in a little, I'll definitely put that in the instructions. Um, but then again, you know, I'm not as Facebook savvy as you, Jack. So um, one of the things that we need to be crystal clear about is what we want to achieve. So quite simply saying, I want to be successful in the police recruitment process isn't enough. We're gonna create this compelling vision for our future um, so that you've got something that's more than just, I want to be successful. It's you imagining what that success is going to look like and feel like and sound like. Um, and we can do that now if you want. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to do a little exercise where we can actually create that compelling vision for the future. We want to have this concrete, compelling vision for the future. This is really important because your mind doesn't know the difference between what is reality and what it imagines to be true. Now, I can do another exercise another time to prove this to you. Uh, it works better in a, in a setting where you've actually got people in a room, uh, but honestly, uh, uh, you are going to uh, be blown away by this the difference it makes when you actually have this strong, compelling and concrete vision for your future. So let me know in the comments, I'll probably just do it anyway. So uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to do a little exercise around that. Um, uh, let, let's just do it anyway, let's just do it anyway. So whilst you're watching this, I'd just like you to, like if you can, if you can, just relax. If you're, if you're listening to this in a car and you're driving, no, don't relax. Uh, but hopefully you're watching this in the comfort of your home and somewhere where you can uh, relax and feel comfortable. And uh, just as you're listening to the sound of my voice, uh, what I'd like you to start doing is to imagine that moment in the future when you've been successful in the police recruitment process. More than just successful, you've passed everything and it's your first day. Now let's go beyond that. Let's go beyond that first day because at some point you're going to go through an attestation. Attestation is where you receive your warrant card and you swear your oath of office and you're going to have your family and friends around and it's going to be awesome. I've gone through it three times. I've been in three forces so I've had to go through it three times and it's an awesome moment. It's just incredible. The pride that your family will have with you 
um, is just enormous. Um, you know, the passing out parade, the warrant cards issued, it's just an awesome moment. So I'd like you to imagine if you can, that you've been successful at everything and it is now the day of your passing out parade. So close your eyes if it feels more comfortable to do so and just see what you'd see at the time, hear what you'd hear and feel what you'd feel. And if you're the sort of person that sees yourself when you imagine something from the perspective of actually seeing yourself, what I'd like to do if you can is just, and like I said, sometimes this is really, really easy it's with your eyes closed, is to close your eyes and just imagine yourself floating into your body and seeing what you'd see through your own eyes on the day of your attestation. That wonderful moment when you're going to attest and Spend a moment and just relish that moment. See what you'd see, hear what you'd hear around you, and feel what you'd feel, whatever that might be. It might be pride, it might be something else, but whatever it is, that feeling. That's right, just really, really feel it. And make the image brighter. Make it clearer. Make it really, really live for you. Make it move. And then anchor that moment. Just anchor that moment. Just remember that moment. Just remember what it looks like, what it sounds like. Maybe your relatives or friends or loved ones coming to you and congratulating you. The things that they're going to say to you and how it's going to feel. Just share that. Share that with yourself. Immerse yourself in it. Immerse yourself in it. Is that working for you folks? Spend a moment just doing that. Now, let me know in the comments how that actually feels. Let me know in the comments, folks, how that actually feels, that moment when you've seen through your own eyes that attestation, that passing out parade. Your colleagues around you look down maybe and see this incredible uniform looking really, really smart, hearing what you'd hear around you and feeling what you'd feel. Let me know in the comments how that was for you, just that little few minutes exercise, because this is so important, folks. This is something we forget to do, I think, in our daily lives, creating this compelling vision for our future, a concrete, compelling vision for our future. Because your mind doesn't know the difference between reality and what it imagines. And you know this to be true. How many of you have woken up from a, a, a dream so convinced it was real? And it takes you a few moments when you wake up to suddenly realise that, that that wasn't real, it was just a dream. Your mind's in... Uh, uh, your mind is capable of incredible things and this is one of the things it's capable of so let me know what it felt like folks let me know what it was like for you to have that clear compelling vision for your future the future you the successful you who is now in the police and i can see uh, just one more thing that jack's been doing some wonders here thank you very much jack in terms of helping people to join me in this facebook live so add something in the comments there folks um, about how that was for you because now what we want to do now we've got this clear compelling vision for the future we want to think about where we are now where we are now and then starting to think about the steps we need to take to get to that clear compelling concrete vision for the future now Laura's just saying here so Laura's saying wow pretty emotional totally proud of getting to this and my closest friends who supported me a couple of amazing retired cops there all very proud, the best journey begins. That's awesome, Laura, awesome. Um, and it is, it's meant to be emotional. Sarah's saying, feeling proud, uh, feeling proud. That's brilliant, Sarah, that's brilliant. Now, what you've done there, and you may be thinking, yeah, but what if it doesn't come true? No, it's going to become true. This is going to happen because you've made it a clear, compelling and concrete vision for the future. Clear, compelling, concrete vision for the future. And now it's lived for you, it's bright, you could see it, you could hear it, you could feel it. You've immersed yourself in the moment. Immersed yourself in the moment. This is more than just, I'm going to be successful in the police recruitment process. You've actually lived the success. You've lived what it feels like to be in that moment in the future. And now we've got to work out where we are now. 
And this challenge and all the work that we do is about developing those steps that you need to take. And that's where I come in because I can help you with those steps. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm brilliant at. And so I'm going to share those steps with you to enable you to achieve, to achieve that concrete, compelling vision for the future. Who's with me on this? Let me know in the comments. Give me some likes or loves if you are with me on this journey. This is what we're going to do in the challenge. This, for some of you, it's the beginning. For some of you, you're halfway through the process. For some of you, you might be getting towards the end of the process and you just need this final push, this final push to drive you towards success. All right, I've seen some likes and loves there. Awesome. Fantastic. Keep them coming, folks. It lets me know that it's actually having an impact on you. So let me just get some water. So I talked about that one thing before that's going to make a difference in enabling you to achieve that concrete, compelling vision for the future. And there is nothing, no, there's no science, there's, well, there's probably science behind it, but there's, there's no complicated science behind it. It's quite simply taking action. This won't happen by happy accident. You won't achieve that concrete, compelling vision for the future by just hoping it will happen. This is why, for those of you who are my clients who have been on my webinars before, on my one-to-one -one coaching, the sessions that I run for you, you will never hear me say good luck. Luck is for people who do not prepare and do not practice. What we're about is taking action, consistent action on a daily basis that's going to enable you to achieve that vision. You're going to move yourself closer to that point where you succeed. Every day, nudging the dial closer to where you need to be. And it's only gonna happen through consistent and massive action. This is the thing I discovered all those years ago. And it's not something that I made up, it's, it's something I picked up off a guy called Tony Robbins in the United States. If you look him up, there's this huge sort of towering six foot six uh, guy who talks a bit like this. Um, <laughs> it's very American, very American, but he, he picked up on this because uh, he studied something called the science of neuro-linguistic programming. Uh, this was a science that was developed by Richard Bandler and John Grinder all those many years ago, way back in the 80s. Um, their first book, Frogs into Princesses, uh, Princes, uh, sold millions. And I got so interested in this that I went on a course with them because what they'd done is they'd, they'd spent time looking at um, success. What makes success? What makes successful people successful? And they worked out that if we copy the things that they do, then we are capable of duplicating that success as well. So it's really, really simple, really, really simple process. Um, and so taking action was one of those things that Tony Robbins still talks about a lot today. And I've used that all the way through my career. Every day, being consistent in taking massive amounts of action that's going to take me closer towards my goal. That's what's going to enable you to succeed, folks. Um, so we're going to take that massive amount of action. We're going to look at what that massive amount of action will look like in this challenge. And here's something else. I'm going to reframe this taking, taking action into taking something called consistent, imperfect action. You might be thinking, why would I want to take imperfect action? Well, for this reason and this reason alone is because when we try something new, we are not going to be brilliant at it straight away. If you remember that moment when you first got into a car to drive a car, or for those of you who don't drive the time when you first got on a bicycle, it didn't happen straight away, did it? You didn't suddenly get in the car and think, right, steering wheel here, yeah, gear stick, and there's those three pedal things, I know exactly what those are. I can even coordinate my feet and at the same time do the indicators and the steering uh, the, the wipers and the, the lights and the radio and all the things that you do without giving it any thought whatsoever. No, you didn't get into the car and do all of that. And the first time you got into the car, my guess is you probably chugged along at five to ten miles an hour and then stalled the vehicle because that's exactly what I did. That was dreadful. But just kept practicing and practicing and practicing and taking imperfect action and improving on what I did the day before. So it's not just about taking action, it's taking action that you recognize and it's okay and you can forgive yourself for it being imperfect because it's not always going to work out well. When you try something that's difficult and challenging and complicated for the first time, it's never going to work. Some examples here, we did a, a final interview webinar last night 
some of the notes I made here. Um, this is someone here who's uh, they've done a little bit of practice, but not enough. And they learned so much here because in their practice session, I worked out that they were consistently using, you might be thinking what's circled there, it's the word we, consistently talking about we, 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 what we did and what we did and what we did and what we did. They would have achieved zero marks because they didn't use the word I at all. So all it needed was a simple course correction, a simple course correction in the answer to the question. The question was about working with others to solve a problem, by the way. And so we debriefed it and then I, uh, we extracted the learning and then we tried again. And oh my goodness, uh, I'll, say, I'll, I'll just call her Jay. I'm not going to use her full name, Jay. Jay's answer was awesome. It completely nailed it completely nailed it. Now there's still some more work to do around the structure. So it was still imperfect, but it was more perfect than it was 10 minutes before. Just by that one simple course correction of removing the phrase we and replacing it with I and then being specific and consistent about how she described the actions that she took in respect of solving the problem. And it wasn't something where she changed the world, but it was perfectly sufficient to enable an assessor to tick, 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 and give her an awesome pass. So that's what we mean by, that's what I mean by the talk about imperfect action, folks, in that it's not going to be perfect ever. There's nothing I've ever done that's worked out perfectly. Nothing, ever, ever, ever. So we just need to recognize that. And this is something I think we can take into the rest of our lives. There's so many people I come across who say, oh, I tried it and it just didn't work. I tried to do, but it didn't work out. You think all the people who've achieved in the world gave up after the first time something didn't work out? No. They got themselves back on their feet. They looked at what they did and what didn't work and importantly, what did work. And then they took massive amounts of consistent action, imperfect action to achieve their goal. You're all with me so far. Keep, let me know in the, the, give me some loves and likes. Let me know in the comments. Is this making sense, folks? Is this making sense? And I'm going to talk now a little bit more about the sort of areas that we need to take that massive amount of imperfect action in. And also to talk to you about um, where you're going to get the time for this from. So some of you might be thinking, where am I going to get the time for this? I'm going to talk to you about this, a little simple strategy you can use to enable you to achieve that time. So... All of those little steps, here we are now, here's our clear, compelling vision for our future. What sort of steps do we need to take? Well, we need to make sure that uh, if we're at the very beginning of the process, that we are, before we even submit our application form, that we are collecting the sort of experience that we can utilise as evidence for the application form, the sort of experience that the police are looking for. So quite simply, uh, looking for opportunities to make difficult decisions with other people, um, I was asked at the webinar last night, so what's a, what's a difficult decision? Difficult decisions are the times when you come home from work or volunteering or a sports club or wherever it might be thinking, I don't know what to do. Oh my goodness, what do I do? I, don't, I haven't got a clue what to do. This is the difficult decision. But you collect information from others, you seek guidance from others, you seek help from others, you go and get counsel from those people who've experienced it before. You look stuff up on the internet. You collect information from a variety of sources. You look at that information, you weigh up the pros and cons, you come up with a series of options, and you choose one of those options, because it's easy to do now. The difficult decision becomes less difficult because of the work that you've done to enable you to make that decision. So we're looking for opportunities like that. We're looking for opportunities where we work with others, to solve problems. We're looking for opportunities where we have challenged inappropriate behavior. Now, it doesn't have to be sexism or racism, it could be just bad practice in the workplace. We have looked for opportunities to support and help other people. We've looked for opportunities to help and support change within the workplace or within whatever environment that you're in. These are the sort of things that they're looking for. Oh, I'll add one or two more. The times when you've changed the style of your communication to meet the needs of other people. And immerse yourself in the world of diversity, equality and inclusion. What does it mean? Why is it important? And then starting to st expand your studies wider into things like values and the impact and commercial awareness and all sorts of other stuff that we're going to talk about 
in this challenge. Is this making sense so far, folks? So this is just quite simply the steps that you need to take to get yourself ready for the application process so that your application form succeeds. In the application form, writing that, there's so many people write all sorts of cliched nonsense. There's books out there that will tell you to use phrases from the competency framework and use these cliches. It actually doesn't say use these cliches, but I read it and think, no, don't, please don't, just don't do that. So there's a certain way to write up your application form, which means you will be successful. The only purpose of the application form is to get you to the next stage. This is us moving closer to the compelling concrete vision for, for our future. And for many of you, that will be the online assessment center, which involves an interview. So what we're going to look at tomorrow on Tuesday, we're going to look at interview technique. We're going to look at the sort of things that you need to include in a really good interview um, and how to structure your answer. And you'll be able to utilize some of this for those of you who have not got to application form stage yet. And we're going to use a SALCU process. Forget STAR. You look up how to answer an interview answer. Um, it'll tell you to use the STAR format. STAR so, excuse me, STAR so dry. It's so limiting. And a lot of people get really confused about the difference between task and action. Mm. Vicky's saying here, actually, the, um, the hardest part is trying to figure out what situation you're going to use. My mind goes blank, even though I've been in difficult situations in my life. I know it's really, Emily's saying exactly the same. And that's why you need someone like me, because I help you with that. Last night, um, we had someone who was saying, I don't think I've ever made a difficult decision in my life. Ten minutes later, we had an awesome, awesome example that they could use from their life. They just not had the opportunity to bounce some ideas off someone like me who knows the sort of situations that they're looking for. So Jack's saying same time tomorrow. Yeah, probably be around six o'clock, but I'll let you know in the group. Uh, so there's more. There's more to tonight, though. Don't go. Don't go. That's not the end of it. <laughs> so we're also going to take a look on Wednesday. We're going to take a look at uh, advanced community engagement skills. Um, this will be really uh, important for you for your stage three online assessment center and also, also, also for your interview because they may ask you questions about what some of the challenges are for the police. And I think one of the greatest challenges that police have got always and even more now today than before is that challenge around their relationship with communities, especially the, the more diverse communities. I'm not going to say hard to reach. No community is hard to reach. You want, you want to find, you want a hard to reach community? Try the police. They're really hard to reach. <laughs> um, you ever try getting in touch with a police officer? Hard to do. You ever try getting into a police station if you're not part of the club? Almost impossible. So talk about a hard to reach difficult uh, community. The police are they. There's no hard to reach. There's just communities that you've not tried hard enough to get to. It's your responsibility as, a, uh, responsibility as a police officer. And we're also going to look at the type of engagement that's going to enable you to score brilliantly at your online assessment centre stage three. And it is not what forces are doing at the moment. It's what forces would love to do. And fortunately for you, for the past 15 years, I've spent um, time involved in tactical and strategic community policing. Uh, I was seven years as a neighbourhood inspector where I trialled all sorts of new techniques that caught the eye of the Prime Minister of the day, Home Secretary of the day, Chief Constable came out to see what we're doing. He wrote about it in a um, reform think tank paper, so we can dig it out for you at some point, called Responsible Citizenship, uh, authored by Peter Fahey, Sir Peter Fahey, uh, previous Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police. I went on to do work with the Strategic Change Branch of Greater Manchester Police around problem solving and community engagement, retired from the police, did three years on the International Advisory Board of a European project that was looking to improve community relationships between the police and communities in Central and Eastern European in the main, but also in, in, in Western Europe. So I did that for three years. I've spoken at conferences. I've done work with police forces in some very, very difficult, challenging areas like uh, Hare Hills and Leeds and Birkby and Huddersfield and in other parts of the country, helping forces improve their community engagement techniques and it's not what you think it's going to be. So we're going to look at that on Wednesday. And why is that so important? Because it's going to enable you to score in your 90s at the online assessment centre. Uh, for those, of, those who have been on my interactive webinars, part of my online, online course, part of that offer, we've got one of those coming up this weekend. 
uh, crash course it's Friday Saturday Sunday Monday oh my goodness we condensed so much into that weekend um, they've just sort of duplicated it used it as a template and scored 90 something percent at the online assessment center in the stage three and that's worth doing isn't it it's not worth investing in the time to get that um, so um, that's what we're going to do on Wednesday Thursday we're going to look at how <laughs> there's no we in your interview answers there is no we and other big mistakes that you could make and how to um, ensure that those mistakes aren't made and what to do instead so we're going to look at that more advanced interview technique and on Friday we're going to take a look at things like uh, the big why what's your motivation for wanting to join the police so you've got an awesome answer to give when you're asked that question at your interview um, values, the importance of values, the importance of recognising those values within yourself, why they're important to the force, and some examples and what impact do they have on communities, and also the impact of being a police officer on your personal life. So, so many things there that we're going to cover uh, that's going to enable the week to be absolutely awesome. And instead of Facebook Lives, I'm going to use uh, Zoom webinars for this, so you can interact with me, I can see you, you can see me, we can talk to each other. The Facebook Live, this initial Facebook Live is just to get things off the ground. And so the link to the Zoom will go in the challenge group tomorrow. And it's gonna be for six o'clock tomorrow evening. You'll all be able to join me, It'll be absolutely awesome. Uh, give, me a, give me a big love or like, give me some comments if this sounds like the challenge for you. Let me know if this is the challenge for you. Um, and if you want to come on screen, I've just seen someone actually, I think they might have pressed the wrong button. Uh, but if you want to come on screen now and ask any questions or just make a comment or anything at all, then please do. There is a way of doing it um, on my phone here. It's uh, if I just click on the button, I can actually ask you to come and join me. Isn't that cool? Um, so, or you can just ask to join as well. So, uh, Jack's saying thumbs up, awesome stuff. Uh, Laura's saying defo Brendan. Right, so anyway, I've got more things to tell you about. More things to tell you about. Because I said before, uh, you might be thinking, where am I going to get the time for all of this? You're going to have to make time, folks. Um, but it's something, actually, once you get into the habit of doing this, taking some action on a daily basis, then it starts becoming second nature. If you think about all the time that you have in a day as being, well, there's one behind you, a bookshelf. Right? My bookshelf has got loads of things that I'm really proud of. Um, it's my ego, it's like an ego bookshelf, that. <laughs> I think it's okay to have that, isn't it? Um, I think about a bookshelf, and it's full of books, and each one of those books is something that you have to do during the day. So one of them might be eating, one of them might be sleeping, one of them might be spending special time with those people who are important to you. Another one might be scrolling through Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, all of those other apps that you've got. Wasting some of your life on that. Come on, hands up those of you who spend an hour or more every day on Facebook. Me. I do because it's part of the group. You know, that's my excuse. Um, but you've got all of those things that you do, and some of those things aren't necessary. Ask yourself, are they necessary? And if they're not necessary, are they taking you closer to your goal? Now, one of them might be exercise, and that's important because there's lots of different steps to take towards getting to that clear and compelling vision for the future. Uh, we've got fitness. You're going to get your BMI measured. It's got to be right. There's no point trying to prepare your BMI a week before your medical bleep test are you practicing for that are you making sure that the vetting when it's done is going to sail through that those people who you've given as references are going to actually reply have you made sure that the qualifications that are required are the ones that you actually have these are all things that you've got to do so these time consuming things you need to keep on your bookshelf the practice though i talked about because when we when you go for your interview when you do the online assessment center the, the, the actual day of your online assessment center or the day of your final interview should not be your rehearsal. Should not be your rehearsal. We rehearse so that on the day we don't come across as being contrived. We rehearse so on the day we come across as being 
natural communicators, enthusiastic, emotional, authentic, but giving answers in a structured and detailed way. And that's only going to happen because of practice. I mean, what I said before about taking action, taking imperfect action, and that's what we're going to do in this group. And they're going to set you a challenge in a moment of sharing something in this group, getting over yourself in terms of recording yourself. What do I look like? What do I sound like? You've got to get over it, folks. Whenever I set people these challenges on my courses and they record themselves giving interview answers and such like, and ask them, so when you watched yourself back, how did it feel? And they'll say, oh, awful, horrible. I look dreadful. I sounded terrible. That's who you are. That's what other people see and hear. Get over it, folks. Get over it. That's who you are. And it's okay. It's okay. So we need to get used to that, folks. We need to get used to taking imperfect action on a daily basis. You're going to have to take one of those books out and replace it with the one called practice. Taking action on a daily basis. So you may have to speak with your loved ones about maybe something like giving up walking the dog. Giving up TikTok. <laughs> Giving up something that's not nudging the needle, nudging the dial closer to where you need to be. Is that making sense, folks? Is that making sense? So the challenge I'm going to set you, and, and please immerse yourself in this. Those people who've been on these challenges before will share with you that this makes such a difference. This makes such a difference. Just identifying something and then practicing it and then sharing it with others in this group and by the way, in this group, it's a special place, folks. We keep what is said in this group. We keep the webinars in this group. The only one I'm going to share is this Facebook Live. I'm going to share this with the bigger group, the recording of this. But everything else from this point onwards stays in the group. So all the webinars, all the practice that you do, everything that you upload into the group, it all stays in the group. If you look back into the history of this group, you'll see the 21-day challenge from a few months ago, back at Christmas, December 2020. As people there sharing their uploads, sharing their example questions, sharing what they've discovered about community engagement. Also in the group is all the webinars. You'll be able to see all of those webinars, watch them at your leisure. And also I've put some links to all of my masterclasses. There's a link to all of the masterclasses I've run so far. Some of these you've had to pay for before, but they're all free for you. So again, why am I doing this for you? Because I want you to be successful. And also towards the end of the week, I'm going to tell you about some ways you can continue to work with me, work personally with me, to keep that momentum going, to be successful, to be successful, to be successful. Every day I get emails from people, I get messages from people, I get phone calls from people telling me about how they've been successful, they've got their start date and how amazing they feel. And I love that. There is no better feeling than that, folks. This is the best. I've got the, the best job in the world is being a police officer. I've got the second best job, which is enabling people to be a police officer, to support them. I'll show you the way, but you've got to do the hard work. All the people who've been successful, if you think about uh, springing to mind at the moment, Sean, who's just been successful for North Yorkshire Police. She worked so hard. She worked so hard. I, show you the, I showed her the way she did the hard work, but she's so proud and she deserves to be because she got through every stage first time. And it was tough and it was challenging. But the prize is worth it. And being a police officer is the best job in the world, folks. There's nothing like it. I experienced it for 28 years and I still work in the sector. At the moment, I'm on the Deputy Commissioner's Working Group for the Metropolitan Police, supporting uh, recruitment and retention and community confidence with the black community going to be doing some more work in the future with forces around problem solving and community engagement. I love working in the sector. I love the police. And you're going to love being a police officer. It's the most amazing, amazing thing ever. But you've got to work for it, folks. It's not going to get handed to you on a silver platter. Things like that that are worth having only happen because of the hard work that you're going to invest now and tomorrow and every day. You're going to take a book off that's wasting your time and you're going to put another book in that's called practice 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 taking imperfect action to succeed in the police recruitment process just imagine that book that's its title it's quite a long title but 
that's the book that needs to go onto your bookshelf until you've been successful. But once you have been successful, your career is not going to stop there. You're going to have 30 years perhaps ahead of you of awesome, amazing, fulfilling career. But that only happens because of the effort and energy you're going to put into it. So folks, time to wind up unless anyone's got any questions. Uh, let's just actually read out a few things that people have said. Um, people are saying, defo up for it. Yes, brilliant. Emily's saying, in regards to the interview for stage two, do we get asked the supplementary points? I'll cover that tomorrow, Emily. Um, ben is saying, definitely up for it. And Kev's got his interview coming up soon, picking up a few Brendan Nuggets. We love the Brendan Nuggets, don't we? Thank you, Kev. And we are going to do that one-to-one -one coaching soon. Uh, just not this week, next week we'll be able to do that. Uh, Laura's saying, hate Facebook. Except for this, you love this part of Facebook. Um, Gemma's saying, there's a, she's heard there's a practice website for stage two. Does anyone know about this? Yes, it's here. <laughs> it's here. Um, and if you've got your online assessment centre coming up, then the practice, it's not a website, it's the interactive webinars with me. It's interactive webinars with me. Uh, we'll do some practice tomorrow because I'm going to bring you all in onto Zoom webinar. Zoom webinar. Uh, Laura's saying Friday's application day for me. Wiltshire, please. Let's make an awesome application, Laura. Let's make it successful, successful, successful. So, folks, unless there's any other questions, I'm going to wrap up this live, the introduction to this next in a series of blue light challenges to enable you to be successful, to give you the tools that you need to guarantee success first time. That's what we're about here. A culture of success, a culture of continually taking action, moving yourself closer and closer to that clear and compelling vision for the future. Keeping up that momentum, keeping up that momentum. You know, there's not a problem with resources, folks. There's so many resources out there. I've got so many resources for you. I think the biggest problem for a lot of people is resourcefulness. But if you don't know what you don't know, then how are you going to access those resources? So I'm going to give you the um, tools to be able to achieve that. And Gems just remind me, actually, what is the challenge for tomorrow? So the challenge, folks, forgot. Well, thank you, Gem. Uh, the challenge, yes, and Vicky's just said to you, say, say we're setting us a task for tomorrow. So it's quite a simple one, this one, folks. I want you to uh, upload a video uh, just to get used to, just used to this, because this is a world that we're in at the moment. You're going to have to upload videos for your online assessment centre. Um, <laughs> Laura's saying, hopefully the Zoom instructions are easy for us oldies to follow. Hey, you're not as old as me. I can guarantee that. Um, Rose is saying, did my stage two on the weekend. Defo recommend Brendan's worksheets and videos. Oh, thank you, Rosie. Awesome. Um, okay, right, right, the challenge, the challenge, challenge. My challenge for you folks is I want you to do a short video upload, record yourself and then upload that recording into this group and it quite simply, it's just you pledging to the rest of the group and pledging to yourself. What part of your life, what, what book are you going to take off the bookshelf and what steps are you are you going to promise that you're going to take to yourself? You're going to make this commitment to yourself. What things are you going to do to put another book back in? So what's that going to involve? What are you going to take out? And then what are you going to put back in? What practice do you feel you need to do at this moment in time? What preparation do you feel you need to do? And you might be thinking, I don't know what I don't know. But it's just a very short video. It could be just 30 seconds long. But if you make that commitment to yourself and record it, you're also making that commitment to everyone else. You're part of a team now in this challenge group. This group should start buzzing, should start supporting each other, helping each other, guiding each other. It's not just me. I will learn from you as well. On this journey, I will learn from you. So that's your very first challenge, folks. Just a quick 30-second video. What book am I taking off? What, what one thing in my life am I doing that's it's not wasting my time but it's just not taking me closer to my vision for the future and what I'm going to replace it with what's my commitment going to be and then we're going to build on that momentum so are we happy with that folks are we happy with that challenge you might be thinking it's a bit uncomfortable but listen we're here to take uncomfortable action uncomfortable and imperfect action that's what we're here to do folks and the first step 
towards success sometimes is just that first step. So that's what the challenge is. It's just your first step for many of you. For some of you who've already been doing this, in which case, awesome. So that is your challenge, folks. I hope that works for you. I'm looking forward to seeing them. I'm going to comment on as many of them as possible. I hope to comment on all of them, on all of them. Let's keep this challenge group buzzing. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it buzzing. Let's light it up with our enthusiasm to succeed, with that shared learning that we're going to experience over the next few days. It's going to be awesome. I'm so looking forward to it. I shall see you all at six o'clock tomorrow. The Zoom link will go in the group tomorrow. We'll be actually be able to see you tomorrow as well. Um, don't be hiding. Don't be hiding there lurking. Come on, you know, show your face, join in, get involved in the conversation tomorrow. Uh, we may even get to practice some stuff, some interview questions as well. We'll see how we get on. It's going to be about an hour between six and seven. It'll be absolutely awesome. And if you can't make it for any reason, a recording will go in a group. But it's it, it just just watching the recording um, is no substitute for being there live. So I hope to see you there tomorrow, six o'clock in this group. Take care and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Bye bye for now.